By now, just about everybody's heard the improbable story of George Washington and the cherry tree. As far as we know, this tale first appeared in the 1805 edition of Life of George Washington by Parson Mason Weems. Now, the history of America's first president, that's pretty important. But the story of the man who gave us the story of the cherry tree? Well, that's useless history. In 1799, George Washington, like many others before him, died. This was a big deal. America had never lost a president before. And while everyone agreed that this had been a great leader, not everybody agreed on how he should be remembered. The president's nephew, Bushrod Washington, selected Chief Justice John Marshall to write the official biography. Marshall was given unlimited access to Washington's papers and diaries, and he wrote the definitive five-volume biography of the first president. But there was one problem. Marshall's biography was dull as dirt. The American army was joined by the Count de Rochambeau at Dobbs Ferry on the 6th of July, and the utmost exertions were made for the grand enterprise against New York. It also sold for $10. To many people, this was a problem, but to Mason Weems, it was an opportunity. Weems was a medical doctor, a musician, and an ordained priest in the Episcopal Church, but he wasn't successful at any of these, and so he took to the road. For more than 30 years, Parson Weems would rattle throughout the Southern United States selling books and pamphlets from the back of his Jersey wagon. Officially, he was an agent for Matthew Carey, a Philadelphia-based publisher of Catholic literature. Weems was a Protestant, but Weems and Carey were businessmen first. If there was a court day or a public fair, Weems was there, peddling his wares. He would tell a few moralizing stories, play a couple songs on the violin, and sell a bunch of books. In small-town America, this was entertainment, and Weems knew how to put on a good show. And when he couldn't find a book he thought would be a good seller, he would write it. Many of his works were short morality plays with titles like God's Revenge Against Adultery and The Drunkard's Looking Glass. Weems would go into a bar, lecture for 20 minutes on the evils of drink, and then sell a raft of books. Of course, it may be that buying a book was the only way to get him to shut up. Weems realized there was a market for a short book about the life of George Washington, something filled with adventure stories and a strong Christian message. He may have lost his church, but Weems never stopped preaching. Weems's book, The Life of George Washington, with curious anecdotes equally honorable to himself and exemplary to his young countrymen, originally ran only 80 pages and came out just three months after the leader's death. It was easy to read and describe George Washington as the greatest man that ever lived. Perhaps most importantly, it sold for a quarter. Toward the close of the trying campaign, it is a fact that Washington had not 3,000 men, and even these were so destitute of necessaries that nothing but their love and veneration for him kept them together. On the title page, Weems describes himself as formerly rector of Mount Vernon Parish, which implies that he was Washington's personal pastor. Actually, there was no Mount Vernon Parish. Weems's church was the back of a wagon. Justice Marshall's biography had sought to preserve the legacy of George Washington and his times. Parson Weems wanted to sell a bunch of books, and he also wanted to provide moral lessons for young people, such as in the story of the cherry tree. In the actual story, Washington does not cut down the tree. He merely slices the bark so that it dies. Perhaps most disturbing is the long speech by Washington's father, in which he tells how he would much rather nail his young son inside a coffin than live with a son who tells lies. Weems's Life of Washington was expanded to a few hundred pages and went through 117 printings. But the cherry tree story became famous because of an even more successful author. School teacher William McGuffey believed that if children were going to learn to read, they should start out with moral instruction. McGuffey's second reader included the tale of the cherry tree, lifted almost verbatim from Weems. For generations, the story was repeated without questions. Something Weems had made up to sell books became a central part of the American identity. 
Except for one thing. I don't think he made it up. This story is one of only a few in the book for which Weems gives a source. He claimed to have heard it from an old woman who was described as a cousin of the Washington family. And Weems' mother-in-law was a cousin to Washington's mother. But even if she was the source, that doesn't make the story true. Just an old tale repeated by relatives. The stories in Weems' book helped create a legendary past for America. The young nation had no King Arthur, no labors of Hercules, just a group of rich white guys with some good ideas. Mason Weems gave America a mythos. But the moral lesson of the cherry tree story was that you should always tell the truth, no matter what. Unfortunately, the moral lesson of the life of Parson Weems is that sometimes you can make a lot more money if you don't. And that's useless history. Thank you.